Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to take a look at Andrino ancestry that's harbored by modern day Iranians using Neolithic era populations as sources. I will also be taking a look at ancient Iron Age Iranian populations from both Central Asia and Northwestern Iran to prove that there is indeed a great degree of genetic continuity harbored by modern day Iranians. Another interesting thing to note is that unlike in a previous video, the Anduno source used here is from Russia and it's almost entirely of European genetic descent which is quite interesting and remarkable. In fact, the only non-European ancestry harbored by this sample set comes from a West Siberian hunter-gatherer source which is almost entirely of A&E descent with only 10-20% to ancestry from an East Asian source. So objectively, this video will take a look at pure Andronovan ancestry in modern day ancient and medieval Iranians. So without further ado, I'd like to begin this analysis. So here is a map of the Andronova culture alongside the Yaz and Bimak cultures and you can see that the Andronova culture covered most of Central Asia which is very interesting including mostly being located in Kazakhstan which again shows the overall vast expanse of the Andronovans but what's interesting here you can also see the Bimak or Oxid civilization as well as the Yaz culture and these were heavily influenced by the Andronovan culture as well as heavily influenced the Aryans as my analysis here will show nonetheless I'm presenting this map to prove the overall extent of the Andronovo culture. Moving on here is a facial reconstruction of an Andronovo man and you can see that he has very Europid or European features and this largely owes to his heavy European descent especially step herder descent from the Yamnayan horizon. Moving on here is another facial reconstruction and this was done by the beaker lady. So again she's uh, popular on telegram and you should definitely check out her channel. So here you can see that again this individual looks very European and is very European phenotypically and as you'll see here these Andrano peoples were also very much a European population genetically speaking. So moving on from that. Here is another image and this is done by the beaker lady as well. So this one's a woman and you can see again a very Nordic or European phenotype which is quite interesting and remarkable. In fact, I'd say that these uh, reconstructions are very accurate and they showcase the overall European origin point for the Andronova culture which is very interesting. Specifically, they were from Central and Northern Europe. So now I'd like to get into the genetic origins of the Andrano people themselves. So before I do that, here is the source population and you can see again all of the components are listed here including a Bronze Age steppe, Neolithic Iranian, Caucasian hunter-gatherer, Neolithic Anatolian, Neolithic Eastern Indian hunter-gatherer, Western hunter-gatherer, Neolithic Levantine Sub-Saharan and West Siberian hunter-gatherer sources. So yeah, here are the breakdowns for the uh, Andrano from Russia. So you can see they were on average 65.8% Bronze Age Steppe Yamnaya, 20.8% Neolithic Anatolian, 7.8% Western Hunter Gatherer, and 5.6% West Siberian Hunter Gatherer. So what these results prove is that on a genetic level, the ancient Andrano population was mostly of Yamnayan descent and for this reason mostly of European descent. As you can see, significant Neolithic Anatolian ancestry at 20.8% and a bit of Western Hunter Gatherer ancestry at 7.8%. With only 5.6% non-European ancestry, you can see here that on a genetic level, the Andrano population from Russia was again mostly of European descent, which is quite interesting and remarkable. But before I progress any further, these are calculations using the previous calculator on the BMAC population. So you can see there on average 9.6% Bronze Age step, 13.8% Caucasian hunter-gatherer, 0.8% Indian hunter-gatherer, 10.6% Neolithic Anatolian, 63.4% Neolithic Iranian, and 1.8% West Siberian hunter-gatherer. So with these indigenous BMAC farmers with which the ancient Aryans uh, hybridized with, you can see significant Neolithic Iranian ancestry and again you can see even from Hyrcania the Shah Tepe samples are from there and they also have 55.2% Neolithic Iranian ancestry. So overall what this means is that BMAC populations were mostly derived from an Iranian farmer source. Despite this however they did have other sources of ancestry nonetheless they were again mostly of Iranian farmer descent. And again, these BMAC farmers would mix with the incoming proto indo Iranians in Central Asia to produce the ancient Aryans. And now I'll take a look at their origins, though I will not use the BMAC populations as a component here, but rather I will use Iran Neolithic in its place since BMAC again has additional sources of ancestry. Nonetheless, though, overall, you can see again that the BMAC culture was mostly of Neolithic Iranian descent. 
So now I'd like to take a look at the genetic origins of the Iron Age Iranians. But before I do that, I just like to present this map, and you can see this is the eventual end point or settling point for these Andronovans who migrated through BMAC mixed with the native farmers, as you'll see, and then migrated to Iran and established the Median and Persian civilization. In fact, I call these different Iranian culture civilizations since they were very unique and they contributed differently and uh, produced a unique culture which was distinct from one another, though nonetheless still mostly similar. There were differences which made them unique. That's why these are different Iranic cultures. So here you can see the source populations and again you can see that these are very similar to the previous ones that I featured except you see no Bronze Age step component and an Andrino component in its place. So these source populations will be utilized to break down the genetics of the ancient Iron Age Iranians as well as the medieval and modern day Iranians. So here we have the breakdowns for the ancient Iranians from Central Asia from the Iron Age. So you can see their Andrino ancestry averages out to 53.9% and ranges from 40.6 to 64.4%. So what this means is that the ancient Andrino population was integral to the formation of the ancient Iron Age Iranians. And then after that, you can see 5.0% Neolithic Anatolian ancestry, 6.9% Neolithic Caucasian, 6.7% Neolithic East Asian, 25.3% Neolithic Iranian, 1.8% Neolithic Levantine, and 0.4% South Asian hunter gatherer. So, what's evident from these results is that you can see on a genetic level the ancient Iron Age Iranians were mostly of Andronovan descent. Despite this, however, they did have significant amounts of Neolithic Iranian ancestry, which ranged from 17 to 33.0%, and also they had a bit of East Asian ancestry as well, which here ranges from 0% to as high as 13.2%. So, with these uh, results, you can conclude safely that the ancient Aryans were not purely of Andronovan descent, but rather were a hybridized population. Now, these findings are in stark contrast to the ludicrous claims made by Jason Reza Giorgiani, who once claimed that the Aryans who migrated to Iran bypassed BMAC from a point west of it known as Hyrcania and had no BMAC ancestry, whereas this shows that they did indeed have significant BMAC ancestry. Thus, these results refute Jason Reza Giorgiani. Moving on now, here are the breakdowns for the Iron Age Iranian samples we have from northwestern Iran. Now before I proceed further, I just like to say that based on the research done by my friend Azad Mard, these ancient Iron Age Iranians from northwestern Iran were not ancestral to modern day Iranians. Nonetheless, they have a genetic profile which is akin to the modern day Iranian population. So for these Iranians, you can see they're on average 17.4% Andronovo, 14.1% Neolithic Anatolian, 16.2% Neolithic Caucasian, 34.7% Neolithic Iranian, and 17.6% Neolithic Levantine. Crucially, however, what you can see here is that the Andronovo answer ranges from 154 to 18.6%. So these ancient Iron Age Iranians had significant Andronovo ancestry alongside their Neolithic Iranian, Neolithic Levantine, Caucasian, and Neolithic Anatolian ancestry. What this means is that the ancient Iron Age Iranian samples we have, despite having some Andronovo ancestry, were mostly of Neolithic Iranian genetic descent. Moving on, here are the samples which had the most Iranian plateau profile that I selected from the general uh, sample set that was available. So you can see that their Andrino ancestry is at 18.6%, their 14.7% Neolithic Anatolian, 16.0% Neolithic Caucasian, 34.9% Neolithic Iranian, and 15.8% Neolithic Levantine. So these Iron Age Iranian plateau profile samples, as you'll be able to see, are very close to modern day Iranians genetically. Overall, these results refute the ludicrous claims made by Giorgiani in his 2016 article against perennial philosophy for the altright.com that prior to the Arab, Turkic, and Mongol conquests of Iran, in other words, up to the end of the Sasanian period, the majority of Iranians were genetically identical to Europeans. As you'll be able to see here, those Iron Age Iranian samples that I took a look at are very close to modern day Iranians, genetically speaking. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at medieval Iranian samples. So here we have the breakdowns for the medieval Iranians. So you can see their Andronovo ancestry is at 27.0% and ranges from 23.6% to 30.4%. Their 12.9% Neolithic Anatolian, 11.0% Neolithic Caucasian, 1.9% Neolithic East Jain, 38.7% Neolithic Iranian, and 8.5% Neolithic Levantine.
So with these samples, you can see again, descent mostly from a Neolithic Iranian source, though you can see elevated amounts of Andronovan ancestry. And what's also interesting is that the sample from Mongolia has no Levantine ancestry. And this means that this sample is likely an Eastern Iranian, particularly a Parthian. Nonetheless, overall, these medieval Iranians are very close genetically to the Iron Age Iranians. So yeah, that's essentially it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at the genetic origins of modern Iranian populations. So up first, we have the sample set of modern Iranians from professionally done studies. So you can see with the modern day Iranians, their Andronova ancestry averages out to 20.1% and ranges from 13.8 to 25%. Their Anatolian ancestry is at 15.7%. Their 11.3% Neolithic Caucasian, 1.8% Neolithic East Asian, 37.8% Neolithic Iranian, 12.9% Neolithic Levantine, and 0.4% South Asian hunter-gatherer. So what's indicative of these results is that the modern Iranians are largely genetically contiguous and very similar to the ancient Iron Age Iranian samples, though with elevated amounts of Neolithic East Asian as well as South Asian hunter-gatherer ancestry. Nonetheless, their East Asian ancestry is only at around about 1.8% and their South Asian hunter-gatherer ancestry is at 0.4%. So overall, what you can see among these Iranians is a great degree of genetic continuity and stability and also a great degree of descent from an Andronova source which averages out to 20.1%. What this means is that on a genetic level, the modern day Iranians are largely genetically of indigenous descent. Despite this, however, they do have significant Andronovo ancestry. Moving on, here are the breakdowns for the Eastern Iranians from Khorasan, and you can see they're on average 24.8% Andronovo, which ranges from 23.2 to 27.0%. After this, you can see that their Neolithic Anatolian ancestry averages out to 11.9%, their 9.2% Neolithic Caucasian, 5.3% Neolithic East Asian, 35.7% Neolithic Iranian, 8.5% Neolithic Levantine, and 4.7% South Asian hunter-gatherer. Overall, these results prove that the Khorasanis of today are mostly of Neolithic Iranian descent. Despite this, however, they do have elevated amounts of Andronova ancestry, which is quite interesting, proving that they're also largely of uh, indigenous Iranian and Aryan descent, which is quite interesting and remarkable. Now, moving on from the Eastern Iranians, here are the autosomal breakdowns for the Iranians from Azad Mard's personal collection. So you can see they're on average 17.9% derived from an Andronova source, which is very interesting, 15.9% Neolithic Anatolian, 14.4% Neolithic Caucasian, 2.0% Neolithic East Asian, 35.4% Neolithic Iranian, 14.3% Neolithic Levantine, and 0.1% South Asian hunter-gatherer. What these results prove is that on a genetic level, the Iranians from Azad Mard's personal collection are again mostly of Neolithic Iranianists and despite this, however, they do have significant Andronova ancestry as well. And what's also interesting here is that they have less East Asian as well as less South Asian ancestry compared to the other Iranians I took a look at. Overall, though nonetheless, these results are excellent and prove that the Iranians from Azad Mard's collection are also largely genetically contiguous. Now before I move on, I just like to say that these results prove that Georgiani claims that the Aryans who were responsible for the great ancient Iranian civilization were only 10% of the population of Achaemenid, Parthian and Sasanian Iran with only 1% being responsible for the great ancient Aryan civilization of Iran. What these results prove is that modern Iranians have significant proto-Aryan ancestry and what this also means is that again Georgiani is completely wrong here with his absurd and fallacious lies and propaganda. So yeah that's pretty much it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video I'll be taking a look at the genetic origins of both the Kurds and Azerbaijanis. So up next, here are the breakdowns for the Kurds. So you can see they're on average 19.5% Androno, which ranges from 14.8 to 22.8%. They're 17.7% Neolithic Anatolian, 12.8% Neolithic Caucasian, 0.9% Neolithic East Asian, 33.0% Neolithic Iranian, 16.1% Neolithic Levantine, and 0.1% South Asian hunter-gatherer. So again, with the Kurds, you can see mostly descent from an Iran Neolithic source, though again they do have significant ancestry from a Neolithic Anatolian as well as a Neolithic Caucasian source and only minimal East Asian and South Asian ancestry. But what's critical here is that much like the Iranians of today, they also have significant Andronovo ancestry. In fact, these results prove 
that on a genetic level the Kurds of today are again mostly of Iranian descent. Despite this, they do have less South Asian and East Asian ancestry, though nonetheless they are still mostly Iranian genetically, which is quite interesting and remarkable. Thus, the Kurds as a population have a very Iranian genetic profile. Moving on, here are the results for the other Bajanis. So you can see that their annual ancestry is averaging out to 18.6% and ranges from 13.6 to 25.2%. You can also see ancestry deriving from an Anatolian farmer source at 19.5%, 18.0% Neolithic Caucasian ancestry, 4.7% East Asian ancestry, 25.9% Neolithic Iranian ancestry, and 13.4% Neolithic Levantine ancestry. Overall, what these results prove is that despite having some East Asian ancestry, the other Bajanis of today are still mostly Iranic. In fact, as you can clearly see here, the fact is that they actually are more Andrano than East Asian ancestry. So again, this means that they're mostly of Iranic descent. And what's also interesting to note here is that the other Bajanis have no South Asian hunter-gatherer ancestry, which is very interesting. Nonetheless, again, you can see elevated East Asian ancestry. So they're still fairly close to Iranians today, despite their elevated East Asian ancestry. And again, you can see they do have significant amounts of Neolithic Iranian ancestry as well, though it is lower compared to the other Iranian samples analyzed here. What this means is that on a genetic level, the other Bajanis of today are more mixed compared to other Iranians. So yeah, these results refute Georgiani's calls for an Iranian eugenics movement in which a Kurds and other Bajanis would genetically replace the Iranian population and would make perfect donors for Persians and other Iranians as if Persians are heavily admixed. And this hatred for the Persians was not a one-off thing as in a leaked conversation with a friend of mine, Georgiani actually said, Kurds and Azeris are much purer Iranians genetically without having any background knowledge in the matter, which is completely absurd and ludicrous. So yeah, these results refuted the ludicrous claims made by Georgiani. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this phase of the video. In the next phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at South Asian and mixed Iranian populations, including the Parsis from India and Pakistan. The heavily South Asian and mixed Iranian populations residing within Iran are the Bandaris, the Baluchis, as well as the Sistanis. So now I'd like to get into their origins. Now here are the breakdowns for the Bandaris, the Baluchis, and Sistanis, and their annual answer averages out to 26.7% and ranges from 23.8 to 31.4%. Their 4.4% Neolithic Anatolian, 0.4% Neolithic Caucasian, 0.9% Neolithic East Asian, 48.8% Neolithic Iranian, 6.7% Neolithic Levantine, 10.8% South Asian hunter-gatherer, and 1.5% Sub-Saharan African. Overall, what these results prove is that on a genetic level, the Bandaris and the Baluchis, as well as the Sistanis, are more admixed compared to other Iranian populations. Nonetheless, you can again see mostly Iranian descent, particularly from a Neolithic Iranian source, and also much less ancestry deriving from a Anatolian source, which is quite interesting and remarkable. So yeah, overall, these results largely prove genetic continuity and stability among these populations, though again, they have elevated amounts of South Asian and Sub-Saharan African ancestry. So moving on, here are the results for the Parsis or Persians of India and Pakistan. So these are Zoroastrian communities residing within South Asia. So you can see they're on average 21.0% and 10.1% Neolithic Anatolian, 5.5% Neolithic Caucasian, 37.7% Neolithic Iranian, 11.1% Neolithic Levantine, and 14.6% South Asian hunter-gatherer. So with these Parsis, you can see descent mostly from an Iranian source, though again you can see elevated amounts of South Asian hunter-gatherer ancestry and their Andrano ancestry ranges from 20.4 to 21.6%. So what these results prove is that on a genetic level, the Parsis of today are at least 70 to 80% Iranian and only have minimal foreign ancestry, mostly coming from a South Asian source. However, these results also prove that the Parsis are less contiguous compared to modern-day Iranian population. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this phase of the video. In the final phase of the video, I'll be taking a look at the Semitic groups of Iran as well as the Turkmen from Golistan. So here we have the breakdowns for the Semites of uh, Iran, including the Jews and the Arabs and the Assyrians. So they're on average 11.5% and you know, ranging from 8.6 to 15.4%. After their significant Andrano ancestry, you can see they're on average 15.5% Neolithic Anatolian, 10.1% Neolithic Caucasian, 0.1% Neolithic East Asian, 30.3% Neolithic Iranian, 31.2% Neolithic Levantine, 0.6% South Asian, Hunter-Gatherer, and 0.7% Sub-Saharan African. 
with these Semitic groups, you can see elevated amounts of Neolithic Levantine ancestry and much less Andrew ancestry. But what's interesting here is that the Arabs also have elevated South Asian and South Saharan African ancestry, which is interesting. Nonetheless, you can see again, for the most part, they're mostly a admixture between the Semites as well as the Iranians, which is interesting. For this reason, these groups are not purely of Iranian descent as they have significant foreign ancestry. So the final population analyzed here are the Turkmen from Golistan. So you can see they are on average 25.0% Andronova derived, 22.8% Neolithic Iranian, 22.4% Neolithic East Asian, 13.0% Neolithic Anatolian, 9.6% Neolithic Caucasian, 5.6% Neolithic Levantine and 1.6% South Asian hunter-gatherer. So these results prove that on a genetic level the Turkmen are mostly of Iranian descent though they do have elevated amounts of East Asian ancestry. To conclude, overall this video took a look at Andrano ancestry in ancient medieval and modern day Iranians and proved that there is indeed a great degree of genetic continuity amongst these populations and also that these populations have significant amounts of Andrano ancestry. What this means is that on a genetic level the modern day Iranians are indeed descended from the ancient Aryans which is quite interesting and remarkable. What's also worth mentioning is that the foreign ancestry in Iranians is at a minimal and is very tiny compared to their overarching and overall descent from an Iranian source. So yeah, that's essentially it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.